Hello viewers, you're here in a revamped Epic TV Weekly. My name's Matthew Rothwell and I'm here with a special guest. I'm gonna give you a bit of a hint who it is and see if you can guess. Originally from Mammoth, California, a former journalist and a free skier, came to Mont Blanc in his first trip, totally bewitched, and has been a part-time resident ever since, since 98 and 99. Is that enough? If not, then maybe just check out this footage and see where you can get it. Yeah, well, you know, when Seth and uh, Kai and JP showed up, despite being some of the best skiers in the world, there was no way I was going to feed them to the wolves right away and be like, oh, yeah, let's, you know, we'll just go rock into the biggest, heaviest run and rip it up. Anytime you get into mountains where there's so many objective risks, skiing is really no longer, you know, enough. You know, it really helps to be a great skier, but that won't take you very far. Skiing is only one third of the whole picture and the rest of it's climbing and uh, just basically getting through the mountains and surviving. The guys gotta know their stuff, they gotta know what they're doing with their ropes, they gotta know their ice axes and crap on them. I mean, they gotta know what they're getting into. Dave Wallace everybody! <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> also joined by beautiful co-presenter Jules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you agree with that statement, Nate? Uh, my girlfriend's sitting over there. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> okay, so Ordinary Skier. Uh, great movie. How did you get involved in it? Uh, the Ordinary Skier was a project that uh, Greg Strokes, who is a team manager of Oakley, kind of put together. And he'd been over here several times since I'd been here to visiting, uh, just skiing for fun. He's got to ski a lot of the classics uh, with me, and that was one of the main reasons that he wanted to, uh, to do that. Um, at the same time, Seth was looking for somewhere else to go for the during his movie instead of going to Alaska, which which is kind of his trademark and spent most of his film career. You're quoted as saying, "If you aren't scared, you're a little dumb." And this is whilst you were maybe looking at Seth with his hands shaking over one of the biggest lines that you were going to do. Can can you remember which line that might have been? Yeah, we were on the north face of the Col de Plan, and that's a a real just like all. The North Face runs is probably one of the more dangerous ones. The, the North Face of the Col de Plan has, a, has an exit where you have to rappel uh, into a very narrow, narrow, narrow couloir and it feeds off all these faces and just when there's a lot of snow it avalanches in there and you can just, just, just wipe you out. You're kind of being fairly underground. It was that movie that sort of pushed you into limelight a bit and people are like, oh, this Nate Wallace guy, what's he about? Well, and, um, yeah. You know, now people can check out a bit more about who Nate Wallace is with the video edits that you've been doing that have been growing in popularity. I mean, the last one you put up, Chamonix Life, uh, filming your friends, doing some big lines around the outs, around this area. Yeah, and so what, what motivated you to start doing your own filming? That was like, I, I started playing around with a, just a Panasonic, a small little Panasonic uh, camera, like a photo camera, and it had a little HD camera on it, mm -hmm. and that was during the ordinary skier, and I kind of started just playing with that and then right after that I got, went home and was like I'm just gonna ski around with this camera not I didn't have a GoPro at that time so I was just skiing around without poles just holding a camera and started but that's how a lot of my all my first ones that are from California were made you know the ski industry didn't really care about Chamonix or the type of skiing that I was into and that's why you know I didn't I didn't pursue the um, then pursue the ski, the ski industry. Yeah, I, I read a quote of yours that says that um, it's easy for people to film skiing and then talk about it and say how dangerous it was, but it's much harder to film skiing and show the fun side. And when you watch this video, this is kind of the impression I get. You're just showing just how much fun everyone's having on a daily basis. Yeah. There's no drama. There's so no. So you, you have to remember that you know a, a movie is something that someone edits to make a, a message, and you can make a message by deciding what you're going to put in that. And uh, CP, the director of The Ordinary Skier, he, he himself was very scared here and it was very difficult. And so that's kind of the message mm -hmm. also that he took. Of course, we know he could have used some of the interviews perhaps where we're talking about what's the most important thing. Dave Rosenberger will say the same thing. Andreas will say something completely different. But for me, and like Dave Rosenberger, we're, our, our favorite things to do is to ski powder. We, we don't like skiing uh, bad snow or yeah. sidestepping or... We I don't, don't think you're alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so that's, and a lot of, from this movie and even before that, uh, you know, I'll show up in Jackson Hole and people are like, oh, you guys don't have powder over there. Or, 
you know, you don't have powder like we have. And I'm like, yeah, no, we, we have powder. You're wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a big misconception <clears throat> for me, as I'm really proud about Chamonix, and I didn't think that that message ever really came out. Not just the ordinary skier, it was also, um, I had a lot of articles written about me or about this place, and it was always that same mentality, um, yeah. which never really got on it. There's a whole town of people here that are just skiing powder most of the time. Yeah. So we hooked up with people from Chamonix, like the people mm -hmm. that are featured in your video, because um, we wanted to help the viewers who might not necessarily know you, uh, we wanted to help them get to know you. So we've got some clips which we want to show you and uh, which you'll hopefully react to. <laughs> so check out number one. Oh no. <laughs> what would be his ultimate dream line to ski in Chamonix that he hasn't done yet? Is there one? Seriously? Yeah, it seems like you've done everything. You've done everything here, no, haven't you? No, I mean, I've done everything that I've wanted to do. But is there I've one line that exists that you haven't done that you're just not really interested in then? Oh, there's a ton of ones I'm not interested in. Really? That's why I haven't done them. We've got someone else who had something to say about you. Let's check him out. I'd like you to tell me who <laughs> Nate Wallace is. You guys figure this out because he's been around a while. First time I met him um, was in the hospital. Glenn Play called me and said, you got to look up a buddy. He was just dug out of the avalanche that was just above your house. And I went and sort of said hello. And um, I've kind of been wondering who he was ever since. Gary really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what avalanche is he referring to? The one that took the house down or that took you down? No, Would that was it? the avalanche of Mont Rock. That's what, that's the first, I mean, I, I think, I don't really, my memory isn't really good on that day. I think Gary, I know Gary stopped by and then another friend of mine um, was waiting at the, oh, actually, yeah, Gary was there. Uh, Christian Pondella, who's became a famous photographer for Red Bull and ski industry and climbing and Will Gadd and a really prolific uh, photographer. At that point, we, we had just uh, started our careers together, whatever that means for me. And for him, it was actually a career. And we had no, money, passports, shoes, anything. We had uh, we had nothing. There was no person from the town of Chamonix either say, hey, you guys all right? Do you need a place to stay? Thank goodness yeah. he was at the door and gave me a credit card and said, hey, come to my hotel room and looked after us and gave me a credit card so I could go. We've got another one, one of more, your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Nate, where's the real North Shore with skiing? <laughs> so the real North Shore yeah. for people like Matt who don't really quite get it, the gnarliest or most dangerous, well, right? Well, it's Is not that what a mean? question of that. It's uh, it's how you would describe like the reason that Hawaii, the North Shore of Hawaii, is the North Shore of Hawaii, and why it is. That's the quote, and that's what he's saying, and that's referencing. Uh, you know, surfing happens everywhere. There's gnarly spots everywhere, but historically, um, culturally, uh, even you know from the old times until now, that's where you go. You have to go there if you want to be a surfer. Oh, okay, that's how you mean. See, even I didn't get it. That's what the North Shore right. means. That's. And that's why it still exists. It's like, um, I still get magazine people or whatever will say, oh, there's too much Chamonix stuff yeah. coming out. I'm like, well, that's what they say in surfing all the time. I have friends that work at Surfer Magazine. They'll be like, well, we've got to you know, be careful. We've got too much North Shore. But at the same time, you have to. I will ask him if he can be able to be on the bar, on the string, with keys at elevation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a date on it now. Are you up for it? Are you up for the challenge? <laughs> oh, a G string? I mean, I could, I could do that. Oh my God, it's That's so on. That's one of the I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, they'll have to give some free beers and. I'm sure they will. If I you think do they that. definitely yeah. some shots. Give us, a, give us a heads up when you're doing it, and we'll make sure we're over there. With a camera. I, don't, <laughs> I might lose a lot of viewers and subscribers on that, but. No, What's you can only that, gain right? in popularity. <laughs> and then we've got one final quote, which um, gather like from what everyone's been saying, we've had to cut a lot at, but he, I think he basically sums up what people here make of you. So let's check him out. What can I say about Nate? <laughs> he's real, he's the way he is, take it or leave it. But it's, uh, I guess it's the most important thing you're looking into people, reality. And that's what he is. Aww, wow. did you expect that? He wasn't even drunk. <laughs> <laughs> one time we found him sober. <coughs> yeah, no, yeah. We, we had dinner last night. That's who we were skiing uh, with yesterday in Italy. Uh, so it was me, Seth, Cedric, and it was his last day, uh, and my friend Thor. So uh, I reckon now's a good time for, for Jules' news. news. She's got a couple of big stories for us, and we'd appreciate your input on these as well. Yeah. Right? So right. I just picked up on the main two ones for me, and um, I thought they might be of some interest to you. 
First one, I said punch me if I do this. Uh, first one is the whole controversy surrounding the 100-foot um, wave that was served by Garrett McNamara uh -huh. a week or so ago. So um, there is a big controversy going around, uh, around it. So we asked our surf editor, Dave Mailman, to explain what's happening. So let's check it out. The 100-foot wave in Nazare, Portugal at Praia da Norte. First and most important thing to know is that it's not Garrett McNamara who's claiming that it's a 100-foot wave. Garrett says, I just ride waves, brah. I'm not the one who measures them. How do you measure a wave? So just for the record, his official world record wave that he surfed in November 2011, it was the Nazare Tourist Board that actually picked up and declared that it was a 100-foot wave. And this time around, it was apparently Surf Europe magazine that made the first claim that it was a 100-footer. And then, of course, the mainstream media picked up on it, and then, you know, they ran for it, and CNN, and ABC, and NBC, and CBS, and all the rest of them went crazy. As far as the oceanographers are concerned, the wave is somewhere between 60 and 111 feet. So even the specialists who are supposed to know what's going on with these things, they kind of have no clue either. At the end of the day, the people who really count are the guys at the Guinness World Record uh, organization, and they say we're not surfers, but we know a bunch of people who are. They're the guys who work at the Billabong XXL Big Wave Awards, and it's that panel of experts who actually makes the call. So they're going to get together sometime uh, over the next month, and around the end of March, the Billabong XXL Big Wave Awards going to let us know if the wave in Nazare this time beat Garrett's world record wave that took place uh, in November of 2011, which was officially recorded at 78 feet. But Garrett, even though he doesn't want to say how big it was, well, he thinks that waves that were surfed on January 28th were bigger than the world record wave from November 2011. So is it a new world record? Garrett's gut tells him that it is. So that's been happening, and I know you surf a little bit. What's mm -hmm. the biggest wave you've ever surfed? Double overhead? Double overhead. Really? 15, 15 foot. Sick. Sick. Well, the other story I picked up on is actually happening right now as we speak. It's the Swatch Skiers Cup. It's the third edition. It's Team America against Team Europe. The first edition took place in 2011, Europe won. America won last year, so whoever wins this year is you know the best for now anyways so um team leaders are to uh, cody townsend for america and i think you know the team leader Sarah for Lincoln. europe is kai zacherson oh yeah it's not Sarah. it's well you know they're, they're kind of like always together no, like a couple in there oh is it Sarah? Yeah. i thought kai was leading the teams this year oh, maybe. oh you're right. anyways they're kind of almost the same but isn't it Svera who did he, it's Svera that's Svera. This, is, this is Svera's event he's the one that put the proposal in to make it anyways he made it happen. Very probable, and that's him right here, backflipping a yeah. an avalanche a couple of days ago. He's crazy. So I was wondering if you would ever take part in anything like this, just because it is backcountry and it's with people you you know probably hang out with. Is there something of any interest to you at all? Um, the same day that actually the same day that they had that contest, uh, me and Seth, we were heli skiing from Chamonix all the way to Zermatt and landed on Mount Rosa in the evenings. We probably flew by the venue. No. Now that that's yeah no. That looks like fun skiing the powder, but... You know what? That's what I was thinking. I was like... But, but really you have to remember, so that same day we skied, that was like, that would be like one minute of my nine hours of skiing we had that day. True. And if you, because you're an American living in Europe, if you had to lead a team, what is, are you still Team America? Where are you? Um, huh. Ooh, yeah, I don't know. Tricky, huh? And if you had to pick a couple skiers to be on your team, any names off the top of your head? I can no, see, so actually, <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can definitely help you out. He snowboards with I, elbow pads. We, we can have, <laughs> I'd just like to say that, you know, <laughs> extra safety means longer riding. That's just how it is. Okay, well, I reckon we move on to, I was going to, it's going to sound a bit funny, but how well do you know your sport? Um, try and help me out a little bit so I don't look so bad about not knowing enough. Um, we got some questions for you and you can compete against uh, Jules. For a race I, to grab... I've not, I've not checked out the <laughs> questions, so I yeah. don't know them either. For a race to grab the hat, and the loser can either have a lap dance from Seth, 
<laughs> or the loser, or the loser has to do a lap dance to the the other person. Do you do, oh. you, so do you get punched a lot when you go out at night? <laughs> I mean, I don't look like this for no reason, mate. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You must you must not go out much at night. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you get eaten by the wolves. You'd be get you'd be get eaten by the wolves around here. <laughs> I reckon it's the new haircut. I reckon it's that. I swear he looked yeah. really cool yesterday, and then yeah. you had him tidy up, and that people will just want to punch him. It's okay. Uh, are you are you all right not to punch and maybe go for the hat instead? I'll, I'll try to go for the hat. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. I swear I've not heard the question, so uh, that we're no. no, we haven't. Okay, get ready for it. Here we go. Who is currently ranking first in the Freeride World Tour Women's Snowboard? You're a oh, snow you're out. a snowboarder, right? What happened? Uh, and you're a woman, right? Is Fully it agree. I'll give you a clue. Margo? It's it is Margo, yeah. That's the only name For I can think of. You won! Yeah. <laughs> There's more questions. Nice, okay. I like the way. Hmm. Alright, so number two. What does NAR stand for? NAR as in G I N A R. Nate's gonna beat you to this one. Go for it, Nate. Um, NAR stands for dumb people from Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> I think he deserves a point anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. He's having that, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number three. What does the, where does the word ski originate? Norway. Oh, very good. Yeah, it's, ah. uh, he's blown it. Yeah, so uh, ski is from the old uh, Norse skio, meaning a split piece of wood. He's got an, an advantage, yeah. though. He's got a Scandi girlfriend, so, you know, I don't... She's Swedish. Uh, yeah, That's but Norway. They're, you know, they're close, but they're not the same. So but the same there's a difference. Yeah, America, there's a difference, right? for sure, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, number four. You've got to try and guess whose laugh this is. You ready? Glenn Plake. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding? <laughs> that was too quick. Too quick. <laughs> Can you stop? That was <laughs> no, that's really, really good. <laughs> I wow. didn't study the questions before. <laughs> no, 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 of course this not. Is, yeah. This is real. This yeah. is reality. <laughs> uh, okay, well, how about this then? Who, uh, see if you can guess who's in this mystery photo. <laughs> oh, I know. That's you. That is you. <laughs> That's nice. me. so ripped, Nate. I had no idea. I, well, wow. Well, when the G-string gonna g party happens. <laughs> You can actually you guys find him wearing the same mask, I think, in Shamanu Life, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Glenn, cool. Actually, Glenn gave me that mask, so. Oh, That's like a great it. mask. It's really, really good. Um, can, you, right. can you turn that off? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can turn this off. It's kind of getting... It's kind of, thanks. <laughs> but it does mean that uh, Nate did win. What? It That's was 3-2, yeah. Oh. So, so what do I do? So you kind of got to forfeit yourself. If Nate's willing... No, Maria's going to punch me. She's way I'll just high five you. Well done, yeah, Nate. That's and thanks good. for I'm, coming. I'm, I'm, yeah, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, so uh, just to sort of round this up, have you got anything that we can look forward to you getting on with? Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be an edit coming every week. I got some great ones coming up. I have uh, a whole day I spent filming with uh, Sam Fabre, who was the line catcher winner yeah. and is also a local kid. He's one of my favorite. Uh, He's, he's my favorite young Chamonix rider, without mm -hmm. a doubt. He doesn't ride like a, a jibber, but he is a jibber. Mm -hmm. He's a very aggressive skier, uh, very, very playful. So that will be, that's going to be coming up the next one. And he'll be riding with a local snowboard coach, uh, Damien Deschamps. Who is, uh, so they're both nice Chamonix yard kids, which will be kind of mixing it up. They have a different style than uh, us old guys skiing. Mm -hmm. There will also be some uh, heli skiing footage of Steon Hagen and me yes. in Italy, and some footage of Seth and me flying to, uh, to Zermatt in one day. Fantastic, awesome. yeah. Well, I hope Sam's all right, because he went out with uh, Jules the other day. Yeah, did you film pre <laughs> or uh, post-tooth? Pre, yeah. yeah. Well, that's because he was, he was filming with Terry Kennard. I mean, did, did, did I? Oh. oh, no, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how long it's been since the uh, French guys filmed with him? No. He, he's only down to Scandos. You know what happened to Fred, right? Like, yeah. 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 He's, sure, a friend, sure. he's a friend of the show, though. So he's a know, friend of mine. Let, let's keep it nice. <laughs> should, uh, should we do the epic question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Let's get into it. It's right. now time for... The epic question. <laughs> 
I can see the anticipation of everyone's face. What does this mean? Well, it was going to be, what is Seth Morrison's phone number? But I just found out pre-show that he doesn't have a phone. So my question is, what's important? Most important is just being happy. Whatever that means and like whatever it takes. So there's nothing wrong as long as you're happy. Good answer. I like it. Great. Thanks for being on well, the show. Yeah, let's thank, let's thank Nate Wallace for being here. Hello. Let's thank Jules. Let's thank the rest of the team. Okay, okay. enough. All right. <laughs> all right, so you can watch Ordinary Skier and all of Nate's edits if you just follow the links at the end of this video. Uh, thanks once again. Thanks for you for watching. Now it's your turn to go get involved. See you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.